We're going on safari and it's just us three. So Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. Right now I am in Arusha in Tanzania and I'm extremely excited because in this series we will be taking you from here in Arusha to the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro, the roof of Africa, the tallest freestanding mountain in the world. But before we dive into the climb, I wanted to take a little bit of time to kind of just familiarize both ourselves and yourself with Tanzania. So right now we are about to pile into this 4x4 vehicle and we're gonna go on a safari in Tangerire. What's the name of that national park? Tangerire? Tangiri? Tarangiri. Okay. So we're gonna hop into this car and we're gonna do a safari today in Tarangiri National Park. It's one of the main national parks here in Tanzania and it's gonna be a super fun day. Kind of questionable weather. There might be rain on the way, but it doesn't matter because this thing will drive through anything. Let's go. We've stopped in downtown Arusha to grab some packed lunches for the safari, but behind me is a clock tower that's relatively important. It's actually the middle point between Cape Town and Cairo. So not only is it a, a clock tower where you can find out what time it is, you also can find exactly where you are on the continent of Africa, right in the middle between Cape Town and Cairo. So we're taking about a two hour drive from Arusha to Tarangiri National Park and we've just pulled over on the side of the road. Behind me is a Maasai village. You've probably heard of the Maasai before. They're one of over 123 different ethnic groups here in Tanzania. I think that the Maasai are probably some of the most famous uh, African tribes. I think when people think of tribes from Africa, the image of the Maasai comes to mind. This man is wearing a traditional headdress which has ostrich feathers. They're pastoralists primarily with cattle and goats. Uh, and that means that they're nomadic traditionally, semi-nomadic now, where they're essentially taking their cattle and their herds from water from place to place to place. So it's really cool. It's day one here in Tanzania. Uh, we've met the Maasai, we're about to go on safari, and I'm just extremely excited to be back in Africa. So this is a baobab tree. It's one of my one of my all-time favorite trees after the redwood, of course, but this is Africa's coolest tree. It's often called the upside down tree because it looks like the roots uh, are the branches, but this is one of Africa's most iconic trees. Uh, it has a fruit that is edible. This is a baobab fruit. Mm -hmm. And you can make juice out of it, or you can just eat the way it is and when it's dried, it actually kind of tastes like dehydrated ice cream. It has the same texture, but like a sherbet flavor. It's very kind of tart. It's good, it's like a superfood. It's packed with all sorts of nutrition. And um, it's a favorite food of the elephants as well. So. So when you go on safari, one of the first things you'll notice when you spot zebras is a lot of the time they're with wildebeest. Essentially they've evolved together to provide better security against predators. Zebra have some of the best eyesight in, uh, in this part of the animal kingdom and the wildebeest have a better sense of smell. Zebra graze on higher grass, wildebeest graze on lower grass, but by coming together and um, essentially providing a better security network for each other, they're able 
to survive with a higher chance. It's really interesting how the animal kingdom kind of evolves in this way where different species can provide uh, something for another species. Co Co-evolution in a way, it's really interesting stuff. This has to be one of the most quintessential bucket list activities in the world, in my opinion. Going on safari in East Africa, here in Tanzania, and being surrounded by the incredible diversity of wildlife, it's, it's mind-boggling. We're surrounded by a group of banded mongoose uh, and probably about 20 or 30 giraffes, which are the national animal of Tanzania. The giraffe actually shares the same amount of vertebrae as a human being. It's just that their spinal column is way longer than ours. And a uh, really interesting way that their heart works with valves, essentially when they are standing up, they have a big heart, pumps the blood all the way up to their brain, but when they go down to drink water, they have to lower their head. Um, and their heart has a special valve which cuts off blood flow so that they don't essentially black out from bending over. It's been so long since I've been to Africa and I just feel so much gratitude. Huge thanks to Killy Warriors for getting us on a safari. Definitely making the most of our time here. All right, well, it's lunchtime. So we've come to one of the few places where you're actually allowed to get out of the vehicle. A little picnic spot, great view over there. We, uh, we have a picnic table. It has an umbrella, although uh, it's missing a pretty crucial part. Anyways, it's time and we're gonna find out what's for lunch. I have no idea what's for lunch. What's, that? what's in the box? What is it, Carl? What do we have? I think we have, I think I've identified, we have identified biscuits for sure. I mean, yeah. it says biscuit. <laughs> I think this is a donut. That looks like a donut. Theoretically, and then there's this, that's a, a crepe, dough stick. Cre uh, whatever that is, and then this looks like a wing. A chicken wing. So some questions and mysteries. I'm gonna start with this thing. I don't know what that is. Maybe, yeah, maybe starting with the meat is probably a good idea. Mm. Oh, that's chicken. Oh, it's good. Just leveled up, we have stumbled upon a herd of elephants, and uh, there's a big bull just down there. Incredible animals, some of the most majestic creatures on this planet. Extremely intelligent, they have really, really great memory. If they've passed through a place 20, 30 years before, they can remember, they know where to find water, they can smell water from miles away. Well, back in the day, uh, elephant herds would migrate all the way from South Africa up to Sudan, southern Sudan, uh, just to put into perspective the amount of territory that they can cover. We've seen some little babies, we see a whole family out there in this dry riverbed, and they can actually use their tusks and their trunk to find water buried below the surface. Uh, they actually have six sets of molars, and that's to chew through some of the really tough foliage that they eat. They can also live up to around 70 years old. When they're on their last set, of molars, they will move to an area that's swampier where they can kind of chew softer food. And that really just puts into perspective how resilient these creatures are and how uh, able they are to survive as long as humans don't kill them. So it makes me really happy to see elephants here. It's a very poignant reminder the importance of conservation and preserving the uh, ecosystem for these animals to survive in. All you have to do is come and spend an afternoon in a place like this to really get a whole new perspective on, on why that's important.
sitting in a tree on a branch and like rolling upside down, down the tree, onto the ground. Scratching his ass. This is what we came here to do. No, not drink beer, but climb Mount Kilimanjaro. But honestly, starting things off today with safari was the best possible way we could do it. So many animals, elephant, giraffe, zebra, warthog, mongoose, even a little jackal. We didn't see any big cats, but hey, you know, cats are pretty much nocturnal, so, you know, we can't, we can only get so lucky. But I thoroughly enjoyed today, and I hope you guys did too. Carlos, did you enjoy yourself? It was wonderful, it was perfect, loved it. <laughs> I'm sold, I wanna come back. <laughs> Do more safari. Yep. Don't tell me with a good time. <laughs> well, here's to that. We're gonna finish these beers, head back to Arusha, and then it's time to get a little more serious. Gear check time. And then tomorrow, in episode two, the climb begins. So, in the meantime, let's enjoy these ice cold beers. Ah, refreshment brought to you by Kilimanjaro. All right, well hopefully you enjoyed that video. If you did, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications enabled so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. And please make sure you stay tuned for part two and three of the Tanzania series where I climb Mount Kilimanjaro, Africa's tallest mountain, the tallest freestanding mountain in the world, and one of the biggest volcanoes in the world. It's gonna be quite the adventure, so stay tuned. And remember, stay curious, keep exploring, and we'll see you on the road. Peace.